Hi, I'm Steve Walters, and today I'm going to go over uh, the different lens products that we have and how to clean them. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, you know, from the, uh, this little cotton glove I got at uh, Home Depot, because you don't want to, I'm going to show you a regular lens. Here's a normal lens. Okay, and how it comes wrapped up. Nice. Okay, and I'm going to unwrap it. And it's very important when you're going to clean a lens, whether it's your lens or your machine or a new lens, you don't touch uh, your, the lens with your fingers. The finger oils will get on them and it will damage the lens permanently. Okay, so this is the lens. I have the curved side up. Uh, that would be not really get as dirty. It would be the flat side that gets more dirty because that's the side that's exposed to uh, everything. So this is we sell and we have. It's a little eyedropper with some alcohol in it. And I'll put a couple drops of alcohol on there and then take the little cleaning wipes and just lightly brush it off, even rub it a little bit there. But again, really soft because even that'll scratch. Uh, we also have these Q-tips. These are more for reaching into places. It, you can really scratch a lens pretty easily with this thing, okay? So try to definitely never use it like this. Don't scrub with it. Again, it's mostly just for kind of cleaning up the dust that might be left on uh, from the acetone drip. So you got a drop, you know, a little wiping, just to dry it off. Swipe, wipe away from the, uh, the center of the lens then it should be clean. Then that goes into your lens head. Your lens head might look something like this. Now I'm gonna show you some of the other products we have, and for those I won't need to have uh, gloves. Uh, and then again, here's, this is the white. Here's how the, the, the people at uh, our factory fold them. They fold it like this, they fold it like this. From here you can, you can stick your finger in here and put, and then you have a, a nice uh, cleaning area, and you can kind of, you know, with this is one of the lens, new lens products I have. You can, you don't need to have gloves because you're touching the aluminum, and here you can easily, you know, drip. Now this is the flat side or the concave side, and then the convex side right here, where it actually says uh, beam in, so you can't put it in backwards. Uh, this is an 18 millimeter version. This is a, a 20 millimeter version of the same thing. This is the side that'll get dirty. So again, a couple, let's see, get a couple, some, a couple drops, put it inside there. Okay, uh, swish it around, get the wipe and kind of just Get in there. You can get in with the way this is folded. You can also kind of get in there and sop it up, and just kind of wipe it nicely with that. Okay. Th this is a, a new product I've come up with. The uh, advantages are I can literally put this on a hard surface, and you can't damage it, no matter what you do. Okay. Uh, where the lens, you got to always. I, I put a, a towel down. This is a, a bathroom towel. Uh, so that it doesn't when it falls when you get it out it doesn't uh, break or chip okay this is a uh, ohm tech head so it looks kind of like this and you can see I actually have my 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 lens adapter in there now if this was a regular lens you drop that out you'd want to definitely have that on something soft here it's not so important because that the lens is protected okay um, also, there's no reason with this to use an O-ring because the gluing actually holds it and all the clamping forces. I can stick this in to beam in, so that means this goes up. Okay, and this is where I'll probably tap on that a little bit to get that done in. Now again, if this was a regular lens, I could see this actually chipping the lens. Okay, and this is the same diameter. Now it's in there nice and good. I'll take that. I will screw that on nice and tight. No O-ring now. 
because all the clamping force is on the aluminum. Okay, so it's easier to clean. It's less stress on the crystal. The crystal, I would say, if you're not using an O-ring in your in your machine, absolutely 100% use an O-ring because it'll it'll stress the crystal. It'll cause it to heat up too much. It'll affect the cut quality. So if you're not using an O-ring, buy you go get an O-ring and put it in. Okay. Don't over tighten it because even the O-ring can squish out and get in the beam path. And if it doesn't, you can still put a lot of stress on the lens even through the O-ring. This crystal is very soft. Okay. So this is uh, an Omtech 18 millimeter. And how do you know? Well, this is something I have right here. Okay. It's a cheap one I have. Actually, I'm going to start today. I've been, I have, they're in a hidden spot on my website, these little calipers. Um, I kind of give them away when somebody has a problem, but I'm going to, I'm going to sell them uh, for uh, $10 and then they'll you know, get a $10 credit when you buy a, a lens. Okay, so lenses come in typically uh, two sizes for the Chinese versions, and that's 18 and 20 millimeters. Uh, there's some American lenses and some uh, universal epilogues that are 19 millimeters. So if you're in a measure, it's, it's not going to be 18 and a half. It's not going to be 20.1 or 19.9. It's either 18 millimeter or 20 millimeter. So those are your options. Um, now this Ohm Tech had one thing to understand is, uh, this is this one here is designed for an inch and a half focal length lens. Okay. So the distance to your cut point is going to be, you know, maybe seven, eight millimeters away. If you want to change the lens to a two inch or two and a half inch length focal length so you can have better uh, cutting characteristics, you're going to have to put the put it way down here. I, I almost, if it's a two and a half inch, it's going to be an inch, inch and seven millimeters away, um, which means the air assist is going to do very little to help you cut. And for those of you who have the ultimate air assist or other air assist, you know how much the air pressure really matters. Uh, this is my my product, which I make also. Again, the idea is uh, lens is glued. Okay, when it's together, same thing. You can drip a couple drops up here. This is the working side. This is the side that'll get dirty. You can easily come in here and clean it very easily. There's no sharp edges. There's nothing to catch here. And for this side. Put a couple drops down the bottom okay and this is where the q-tip now just swish this around because really all that's really going to be in there is dust lean it to the side and use your q-tip to kind of just uh, absorb it away don't don't rub in there don't push hard you're just getting rid of the acetone that's this left in there and now it's clean okay and that's very easy to clean the the nicer thing with this again i have the the set and they all come with different nozzles and the distance on all of them this is a two and a half inch Vulcan it's it's 10.5 uh, millimeters or the, or the same diameter as a triple A battery so if you were to use the my four inch lens you would use the triple A battery okay if you want to cut and have it more to the center well then you move it a little bit lower so that the the actual focal point is down toward the center of your thicker piece of wood okay and of course I have the inch and a half lens uh, that's, that's uh, American photonic style. And again, the same 10.5 millimeters sets the focus right. Uh, I have this uh, cleaning kit, which I offer. It's like $13. It is a half ounce of uh, alcohol, 100 of these Q-tips, and 10 of the wipes. These are the same wipes we use inside our factory. Uh, I think you saw how to, how to fold it, okay? And you saw the difference between a standard lens, my glued lens adapter, and then finally the uh, the glued lens with tube and nozzle for each set. Now these are nice because if you have this and you want to use this, okay, that's your inch and a half. Maybe you want a four inch, or maybe you want a two and a half. You can buy just this. Okay, I do sell uh, the full kit, which I think a lot of you have seen before. Okay, and it has a, uh, a little flow control over here. This controls the airflow, so you can get it harder or faster. An alignment tool right here. The triple A battery, which is for setting your uh, focal height off the tip of the nozzle. And I have these in both 
with, with four lenses and with three lenses. I think this is more common. A lot of people want all the varieties and they use them as spare lenses also. Okay, so they, they have extras. If something happens to one of them, your air compressor fails, uh, then you, you know, and it damages the lens, you have an extra one. Uh, my suggestion as a manufacturer and in cleaning procedures, I would suggest you clean your lens every evening or every time after you finish a session of cutting. If you're done at the end of the day, take your lens out. If it's this, it's gonna be more complicated as you can see. If it's this, it's really easy. Take it out and look at it, okay? Maybe you'll need to clean it, maybe you won't. And that, but you wanna know at night. A lot of times your, uh, your desk can't and your, your dryer isn't working and you're gonna get dew or moisture coming through which is going to damage the lens. And if you check it uh, once a week or in the morning, that moisture will have evaporated and you'll never know you have an air compressor problem. Uh, air compressors get old, they start passing oil and you'll see a light, you might see some light oil on there when you clean it. Uh, an evening clean after a session, I think is good for preventive maintenance. You're, you're keeping it clean, you're checking the status of your compressor, your dryer, your coalescing filter, you're checking all these things by just taking it out, cleaning it. And, and that's another reason why I think this is very popular because it's much easier to clean with this. You're taking it out, you know, you're, you're doing, you know, taking this, you know, to really see it because the dirty part's on the other side here. It's in the hole and then you can't get to that. So you actually have to remove it and, and drop it out. Now you can see the part that needs to be cleaned, whether it needs cleaned, whether it has any moisture, oil on it. Where, where this one, you know, the nozzle goes on afterwards and you can, you can see it quickly and easily. So that is the basics of cleaning. Those are American Photonics' different lens products explained. A lot of people ask me what my products are and what, what's the differences and why. Um, I make most, uh, our business started making optics in the high power, which is four, five, 6,000 watt lasers. So this is all, uh, all the laser uh, grade zinc solenoid is, is not the scraps from 2.6. They're actually the, the pieces around uh, the big lenses that I make all the time. And it's the same grade of zinc solenoid uh, for all of my lens products that I use in my, my 6,000 watt lasers, uh, laser optics that I make. So this is gonna work really well uh, all the way up to the power. The only drawback on maybe using one of these is uh, beam diameter. Okay, if, you're, if you uh, have a 150 watt machine, the, the zinc solenoid can handle it, but the question is how big does your beam get? And is it gonna be bigger than say 10 or 11 millimeters? Because that's the hole the beam has to pass through. It's actually gonna conduct the heat away a little better because of the aluminum than say this lens would. This lens is going to conduct the heat away from the center uh, out into the head worse than say this one would. This is gonna do a better job of removing the heat. Again, don't touch these with your hands. 100% um, acetone or 100% or 99% alcohol. Um, and uh, good luck keeping your lenses clean and uh, hope to see you again soon. Bye.